Hello, and thank you for joining us for our fifth LOSAP webinar uh, with PenFlex. Today, we're going to be talking about points and record keeping for a LOSAP plan. Paul Cognetta has joined us this afternoon. And Paul, let's let's dive right in and start talking. We've, we've talked up to this point about what LOSAP is, why it's important, how it can help you with recruitment and retention. Now we want to make sure that the department does everything right on their end so that the program moves flawlessly. So I assume there's some rules and regulations out there that, that define exactly what we've got to do. Well, Dave, thank you for having me back. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed our series that we've gone through for the last five months. And you are correct. Record keeping is extremely important for a good LOSAP program. Timely and accurate information is key to a successful program. For example, in New York State, the state has developed LOSAP laws outlining a LOSAP plan for fire and ambulance. Uh, they are articles 11A, AA, and AAA. So anyone could simply look them up on the internet uh, and type in LOSAP, New York State, and you would find the language listed uh, for LOSAP. Now there are states, Dave, that we deal with outside of New York, that the states don't have any laws at all regarding LOSAP. So what PenFlex has done over the years is we utilize our expertise and knowledge, and we will still help those fire departments and inventory services in developing a LOSAP plan. And we sort of use the outline that New York State has created because it's such a good and defined plan. Perfect. Sounds like a great idea. So let's talk specifically about that New York program. How do we determine which of our members do and don't qualify for LOSAP on an annual basis? Well, Dave, in New York State, it's is stated that a volunteer must earn 50 points to earn a year of credited service. Well, what does that mean? Well, in essence, what New York State is saying is they want the volunteers to be actively engaged in participating in their departments. So what New York State has created is sort of a template, a guideline as far as points for different activities, which we'll get to in a moment. And we've always run into situations every year, and this is why it's nice to have it written by New York State as far as the guideline, where people don't make 50 points. And they're saying, geez, I still want to earn a credit year of service. I still want to be able to be earning that financial reward. And this was what makes it relatively easy for the fire departments and the inventory services uh, when tracking points, because if someone doesn't reach 50 in a given year, then unfortunately they don't qualify, but it is black and white. It makes it so much easier um, for a LOSAP administrator to monitor the plan. Now there are certain guidelines, of course, where that may be an exception would be granted for in case if someone had a disability and they couldn't participate, or God forbid if someone was to pass away, there are exceptions to it as far as gaining credited service. But for the most part, say 99%, you have to earn 50 points to get a credit year of service behind you. Very good. And we've already had a great question that comes in that says, if a member doesn't get 50 points in a given year, can they then start up the next year or subsequent years to, to keep building towards that financial reward? And that's a very good question, Dave. And the answer is yes. Just because you don't qualify in one year doesn't mean that you are disqualified for years going forward because certainly things happen. Uh, people aren't able to volunteer as much as they would like. Um, so it's not a penalty if you do not make one year of credited service. But very, very good. So does the, the program sponsor have some ability to decide how those 50 points are awarded or is that all set? No, it's another good question, Dave. So in New York State, they do have a template that talks about points. It's a guideline. And then what we will do 
is work with the plan sponsor to determine what point totals should be assigned for different activities. So for example, you'll see on this slide, there's individuals that will conduct training. There's drills that you do. Uh, you could be an officer in the department, uh, general attendance of meetings. You could be a participating person for these trainings. And then of course, calls. So each department will set up their point system a little differently. Uh, they want to have a little flexibility, and we certainly understand that because, Dave, at the end of the day, the, the goal is to make sure the volunteers do achieve those 50 points. But in the same sense, they're not going to say, okay, if you go to one training and you attend one meeting, you're going to get 50 points. I mean, the whole point of a LOSAP program is to have volunteers actively participate in the items that are listed on this slide, and most importantly, calls. So New York State, with that 50 points for an entire year, really gives a volunteer the opportunity to earn those credited points. Sounds a little bit overwhelming. Is there, is there some help? How, do, how does an organization go about setting that, that point system up? So Dave, certainly PenFlex, our expertise and knowledge of LOSAP has occurred for well over 30 years at this point. So we have had the opportunity and good fortune in dealing with many different departments, fire and ambulatory, in setting up their point systems, you know, having discussions, what makes sense. You know, we're able to give other departments some ideas of how other plans are set up. So again, you're, you're taking that model and all this information. And when we talk with our clients, we give them guidance. And at the end of the day, they're the final decision makers of how to develop the plan. But again, we're working under the premise of 50 points. So it's never going to be okay. Uh, fire department A is only going to do 30 points and fire department B will do 50 points. Everything is under the same guideline, which is 50 points. That makes sense. So how do, how do we do that? I assume it's on an annual basis. Is there requirements as far as what needs to be done when? How do we compile all this information? What are those annual reporting requirements? That's a very good question, Dave. So what we do at PenFlex, we will send out what is known as a data request package. And we send that out really at the end of the calendar year, around December or so. And we're looking for plan information that the sponsor will have, and they will send that to us. And what we do, Dave, is we create the actual reports, send them to the plan sponsor. So for example, we have a current roster of the volunteers for that particular department. We'll send that information. And what we will do is we will ask the plan sponsor to list the points for each individual. And what we're able to do is then track those points year over year and make sure people are receiving credited years of service. And in our reports, we also ask if someone's active or not active. Now, there, there could be a situation, as you uh, mentioned earlier, Dave, where someone might not participate and volunteer in a given year, but that doesn't mean that they're still not a member of the department. And there could be changes in membership. You know, somebody could move away but we still want to track that information because if they, if they reach what we call entitlement age, someone is eligible to receive their low SEP award just because you participated uh, in a certain area. If you move, doesn't mean that you're disqualified from collecting your low SEP award. So we always want to know if there is any type of changes uh, in the membership from year to year. So if I'm a participant in the plan, so I'm a member of the fire department, how do I know whether I got credit or not or whether I got credit for the things I should or not? So what we do, Dave, um, when the roster is put together, 
one of the requirements of the plan sponsor is they need to post the points uh, in the firehouse or in the EMS uh, area where um, members can see the points to validate if they've earned points or not. Very good. Is there other record keeping or forms that are important as the plan goes throughout the year? Oh, absolutely, Dave. You know, again, record keeping, as I mentioned from the outset, it's the foundation of a successful program. And there's many different forms that keeps a low set plan on the straight and narrow, if you will. And for example, a beneficiary form. And we've mentioned this in past webinars, beneficiary forms is one of the most important forms that we maintain for our plan sponsors. And a simple reason, Dave, is if someone was to pass away, and they are still entitled to that benefit, we wanna make sure that that beneficiary receives the benefit from that volunteer. So we are constantly making sure we have updated beneficiary forms. There's also a payment commencement form. So when Dave, when someone reaches an entitlement age, and let's say that entitlement age is 62 years old, we will send a form to that participant saying, congratulations, you reached the entitlement age. Here are your options of how you can take that financial reward from the low set plan. And then we will start processing that paperwork for them. Uh, the next one is death and disability forms. You know, unfortunately, people do pass away mm -hmm. and we need to process the paperwork. Uh, mm -hmm for the plan sponsor uh, because ultimately that volunteer is no longer an active participant. So we want to be able to process that information in a timely manner. And then also people become disabled. Uh, they may be disabled by working outside on their normal job or they may be disabled by volunteering for the department. And we help maneuver for the plan sponsor what needs to be done and what paperwork needs to be completed if someone does become disabled. And equally important, Dave, is our participant statements. So every year, our participants receive a statement letting them know what their financial award would be for their low set plan. Now, most low set plans state that you have to be vested for a certain period of time, usually five years, to receive any type of financial award. And certainly people go well beyond five years. But the nice thing about the participant statement, it sort of tracks for you how well your low set award is doing. And since the LOSEP award is tied to investments to a certain extent. Um, when the markets are up, that money that you have in your LOSEP award certainly is going to go up. And when the markets tend to be downward, then you'll see the changes that take place. So getting a participant statement every year is a great benefit that PenFlex provides to all of our participants and, and plan sponsors, of course. That sounds great. And I know, you know, none of us plan on passing away or know exactly when that's going to happen. I know myself when, you know, they've given out beneficiary forms, I go, yeah, I'll get to that somewhere down the road. How often does it occur that those beneficiary forms aren't up to, up to date? And how important is that to do that? So what we do, Dave, when we send out our data request packages at the end of December, we will give a listing to the department of all the participants slash volunteers that we do not have beneficiary forms on file. So this way the plan sponsor has a good understanding and then can go and talk to those individuals and say, hey, you know, we're being told that we don't have a beneficiary form on you. It's very important to do so. And then secondly, a volunteer slash participant can send to us at any point in time an updated beneficiary form. Uh, we have a client portal 
uh, which in essence allows someone to go online and get a beneficiary form, complete the form and send it to us. So we can update that information as soon as we receive it. And I assume that's pretty important in case my beneficiary passes away, in case I get a divorce or one of those type incidents, probably probably important to make sure the right person is going to get those benefits. Absolutely. So that's, that's why we send on an annual basis a report letting that department know what, who may be outstanding. Very good. So you, you mentioned the participant statement that's received, the posting at the firehouse. You know, after that's been posted for 30 days, is there then some kind of process which kind of solidifies that information? Yes. So the way that we work, Dave, at PenFlex is that we will ask whomever the plan sponsor is to certify the information. Meaning, as we do our reports, all the information has been completely reviewed, discussed, and ultimately decided upon that this is accurate information. Because when we receive back, Dave, the data request packages, that's when PenFlex starts working on the annual report for the plan sponsor. And the process is one that takes usually 30 days in the instance of posting the points because by law in New York State, and we, we really try to do this in all the states that we work in, is to have the points posted for 30 days so a participant can review the points. Let's say someone is at 48 points, Dave. Well, as I've expressed earlier, they're not gonna receive credited service because they're not at 50. So this way it gives someone to say, hey, you know what, you're showing 48 points, but you missed the training that I was at that it was worth three points. So it puts me over 50. So a volunteer does have the opportunity to review and question their points. Once the points get ultimately signed off by the plan sponsor, that is the information that we use to do all the calculations for each individual participant in the LOSAP plan for that particular department. So we take all that information for all those plan participants. We do all what we call valuation reports uh, based off of the financial well being of the plan. And we create what is known as an annual LOSAP report. In essence, it summarizes all of the record keeping. We're, in essence, creating a history of the plan. Year after year after year, our clients receive an annual report. And many of our clients have an accurate history of what occurs because we give them this annual report. You know, we've taken over, Dave, from competitors, uh, low set plans, and unfortunately the record keeping is not in a very good state. And it is a struggle for the plan sponsor to gather information for us because their prior administrator did not do a good job in keeping records for them. So one of the things that we're quite proud of is the level of detail that we provide to our clients when it comes to record keeping. You know, as I said from the beginning, and I will continue to stress it, the record keeping is one of the most important pieces of a low set plan. If you have accurate and timely information, your plan runs rather smoothly. It's when you have gaps or holes in that low set recording of information where problems occur. So we at PenFlex do a really good job in helping the plan sponsor understand their low set plan. And again, guiding them through the information that we need. And one of the other nice pieces to this, Dave, is we're always willing to meet with the plan sponsor to review their annual report. So we will go out and actually physically meet at the department 
with the plant sponsor. We certainly will do teleconferences. And now with the advent of video conferencing, you know, we do a lot of video calls too. So we'll set an hour aside and we'll go through the annual LOSAP report with the plant sponsor. And again, talking about their financial health of the plan, talking about uh, the age factors of, you know, are people getting closer to entitlement age? Do we have newer members? Um, so we will go through the whole annual report if a client desires that. Sounds awesome. Paul, throughout the, the series of uh, webinars that we've done here, um, which are all available uh, as recordings, so if somebody missed one of the other webinars, we certainly encourage you to go back and look at those. I think you've done a great job laying out, you know, what a LOSAP program is, just how important that is for an organization. You, you've talked about some of the details, what's involved for both the participant and the you know, the administrator, the department, what are the things that need to be done on an annual basis? And then, you know, the importance of making sure that all those beneficiary forms and everything is kept up to date. Anything else you'd like to share before, before we part today? Sure, Dave, and thank you. So I, I would like to stress to people that have had the opportunity to view the webinars, and they, hopefully they've had the chance to go through all five. But, you know, a few points that I'd like to end on. First is, this is all that Penflex does is LOSAP plans. Our expertise, our knowledge, our level of resources makes us a very highly and effective administrator for a LOSAP plan. And second and even more important, for those departments thinking about creating a LOSAP plan, I highly encourage it. It's a great way to recruit new members because you're able to discuss a financial award for their efforts. But even more importantly, it's a great way to retain current members because at the end of the day, those members that have been there five, 10, 15 plus years, I and mean, we have people, Dave, that have been uh, in volunteer departments for 30 to 40 years, you know, some of their LOSAP awards are quite high. And when I mean high, I'm talking over $100,000. So it's a nice financial award to receive for your level of volunteerism and commitment to your community. So I highly encourage people to reach out to us to discuss LOSAP and what it means and how they could set one up in their local communities. Well, we, we certainly appreciate your time, Paul. And again, it's, it's impressed upon me how important that relationship between your plan provider and your, your organization is. So the address information is up there on the screen, your email, your phone number, uh, different ways for people to get a hold of you there at PenFlex and, uh, and talk about their needs for their department. So, Paul, we appreciate your time, and uh, we look forward to talking with you in the future. Dave, thank you so much.